Hi you guys, welcome back to the channel and another Falconry episode. An interesting one, I don't know if it's going to be quite as mm, argumentative as seemingly imprint houses hawks or hooding or other things that we have and will touch on in this series of Falconry videos. But for sure it's a topic that is kind of this or that to some degree. Ironically, most falconers throughout the year do this and that. It's a topic that has more of a can of worms and emotive subject to the general public than it should ever have. It's ridiculous. Um, and on that subject, you know, we, we now live in a time where probably more than any time in history, so few, the tiny weeny minorities of things uh, can have a way more disproportionate influence on everyone else. Uh, social media certainly gives these people uh, a voice through a loudspeaker. It's not their voice. It's not. It's not a, a general percentage of people, but it gives these tiny minorities of you, and it gives people that are people haters, that are protectionists but not conservationists of you. Um, often it's just seemingly not just England but the world. There's a lot of people that don't like to see other people having fun. They don't like other people doing things that they don't like. So they're intolerant to other people doing something that they don't agree with or they don't like. And it's becoming the bane of falconry, shooting, fishing, any form of hunting. It's becoming the bane of any form of um, animal keeping. It's becoming more than anything else that worries me, I think, really, if I have to be honest, the bane of conservation. Uh, many of these people are so-called protectionists. Well, unfortunately, protectionists, a lot of them just seem to be people haters more than actually interested in the thing they think they're protecting. But a, a protectionist, if you had to sort of sum it up, a protectionist says, oh, don't hurt that poor animal. It's a little human in a, in a fox's skin or a fluffy skin. But they don't understand all. Let's protect its species. Some protectionist, in fact, there's a well-known comedian who actually I quite find quite funny on some of his stuff. He actually admits, I oh, do you know what? If it meant not hurting that animal, I'd be okay with the whole species dying out. That to me sums up a protectionist. Literally, they are not conservationists. And as falconers, we're in a line, a line of fire for these tiny groups. Now, some of them are only in it to make money. Look at some of these things. Um I'm not going to say their name, I don't know. Can you be slanderous on YouTube? But freedom for things that aren't plants. Um, a lot of it's they're just, they're, they're political money-making organisations. There's a very well-known birding um, protectionist group that are oh, massively rich organisation. They take donations from the public and they take millions of pounds of public money that you and I don't really know about. They, they get grants and things for stuff, even though they've got millions of pounds in the bank. So a lot of protectionists become organisations to make money. But for falconry, we're in a long line of things. So as I speak now, I don't know if it's made law, but it looks like it is or it will be that you can't hunt rabbits, even though they can be a terribly verminous crop for veggie crops. <laughs> you can't hunt them with dogs anymore. But you can hunt rats and mice. How does that even work? How does that even work? Because I can tell you now, a rat has more emotions, feelings, and probably brain power, I think, than a rabbit. So how does it work? Uh, maybe it's because, yeah, the rabbits are countryside pests for some people, um, for agriculture sometimes. Maybe, maybe the rat, you know, that's an urban pest for everyone else. Yeah, maybe we could still have to get rid of the rats any means possible. I don't know how these things ever come to be. And I think the perception of these people is... Oh, because they enjoy killing animals. No hunter enjoys killing animals. Psychopaths probably do, but no hunter enjoys killing animals. And that's something that protectionists and antis, they just cannot understand. And of course, like most of you falconers watching this, who loves the natural world? Who are the most passionate conservationists? In all, it's the hunters, isn't it? It really is the pest controllers. People that are pest controllers usually do that job because they're wildlife mad. They understand the animals, but these other people don't get it. So we live in this time where we're being viewed upon. Goodness me, you know, fishing's gone. 
or goes in anywhere. That's how ludicrous it's become. So the topic is, hang on, let's have an intro. Too much waffle, hold on. So the topic is, I can't say it. <laughs> so the topic is, which is best, tethering working birds of prey, falconry birds, or free lofting in aviaries? Well, is there a best? Mm. Falconry birds have been tethered traditionally for thousands of years because for a working falconry bird, I think tethering, if you had to say which is best, is the best way for a working falconry bird. Because if you think about it, our birds are conditioned to want to be with us. We're there everything. We give them food if they can't catch their own food. And we take them to places where they can exhibit their natural behaviour, hunt their own food. So we're their key to everything, aren't we? Get, oh, look, there's Dave. Land on his glove. He's going to take me out hunting. I can do my own thing and fly free. Woo, best part of my day. Love it. And yet you put them behind an, a screen in an aviary, an ordinary mesh, they still want to do that. They're still conditioned. They still think, oh, let's Dave, let's go and be with him. But now they're flying into the mesh. And of course, then they hang on to the mesh with their feet. Their primary feathers and their wings go through the mesh and become damaged. If it's your pet parrot, who cares? You don't let the poor thing fly. It crawls around your house. Working falconry bird needs to be fine fettle and super fit. Damaged wings because of its housing is a no-no. And traditionally, of course, also... Much of falconry would have been nomadic, whether it's medieval knights on crusades taking their falconry birds with them. They're not taking huge aviaries everywhere. Tethering, carrying on horseback, tethered to the glove, held in the glove, works perfectly. Mongolian eagle falconers and, and Mongolian falconers in general moving house quite regularly. They're not building aviaries for their eagles all the time. Tethering works. But why does it work? Is it just because of us for our, for our convenience? Not at all. We've already discussed... It's probably the best way to keep falconry birds from damaging themselves when they want to fly. They're not hitting themselves on anything. Tethering done properly. And, and we've got to talk about done properly. We're not talking about chained by a chain to the side of someone's house on a concrete floor, food thrown at it, no water, living in its own poo. We're not talking about that because we can talk about that with children, with dogs, with any form of life. We're talking about tethering done properly. Oh, look, there's my finger. Hold on a second. Should have brought a tripod. What does tethering give you for your working bird? It can be kept tethered without damaging itself at all if you do it properly. I don't care if it's a sparrowhawk or a goshawk. If you do it properly and you think about it really wholesomely, it means you can micromanage that bird's life. You can put it in the sun to warm up. You can put it in the shade if it gets too hot in the day. You can give it fresh water. You can take the water away. Maybe it's going to freeze tonight. It's had an opportunity this morning to bathe. It doesn't want to. Uh, if you're not a falconer, just to let you know, birds of prey don't need to drink if they're fed well. They don't need to drink at all. Many love a sip of water. And, and of course, they should have the opportunity. But they do love to bathe and keep their feathers in fine fettle. You can micromanage them in the colder months. You can put them tethered indoors somewhere warmer and more sheltered. And so on and so forth. You can give that bird, you can tend to its tiniest ever needs because you can move it anywhere. In an aviary, it's in there. You've got to build it to its needs, but that's it. It's in there. What do you do about the water? You know, do you risk that it's going to bath or do you just not leave any water in there? It's, it's more difficult. And I'm going to talk you through some of the pros and cons. And I'm going to show you now here at the Falkery Centre... We actually keep almost all of our birds, not tethered anymore, free lofted. And I'm going to talk you through the pros and cons and the reasoning why. But before I do, the irony of it is, many people will say one or the other, but most falconers tend to do both. Most modern falconers would have their birds tethered during the hunting season for let's say six months of the year, and then chuck them in an aviary free lofted to molt and make up various reasons for why they do it here and there. Do I think tethering's bad? No, I think tethering done properly is an absolutely fantastic way to keep birds of prey. And I'll talk to you more about it in two seconds. So what I really don't want to do is list 
best tethering systems, the best kind of perches, the best kind of housing, how to build a aviary, a free loft. I just want to talk to you, show you some ideas, pros and cons as we go around. The weirdest irony is my golden eagle has just destroyed a tethering system that he's had now for at least, I don't know, blimey, three years or so. One thing that can go wrong tethering, if you're not there at that moment, things can part company. A bird that can get away with its leash on, almost a death sentence. You've got to use good kit. I prefer, once my birds are trained, I prefer high blocks a meter high for my falcons and three or four foot high ring perches for my hooks. I prefer that. I've used all kinds of tethering systems. I also prefer braided equipment with proper Sampo swivels. You don't need huge swivels if you use quality. Braided tethering systems, Sampo swivels, lease extenders. It's a really, really a loop leash, a really anti-tangle system because the best one in the world whether you're at home all day, you're not watching those birds all day long. And of course, tethering throws up the thing if you're not there. What happens if the birds do get tangled? What happens if a bird, a cat, a fox comes in to get your bird? Do you then have to build over that with some kind of weathering shelter to keep predators out? There's lots of different things, but I'm gonna turn you around, hold on. I'm gonna show you some of the birds really quickly. Forget the wire mesh on the outside of these barred windows. They're to stop our trained kestrel going in and getting eaten by the occupants. So ignore the mesh. Barred windows. If you're going to build your own free loft, doesn't matter how big they are. Think about how you do it. I'm not going into detail. Barred windows. The bird lands. It can't hang on the mesh. It's on bars. It slips down. A window shelf perch underneath. The bird will soon fly to the front, land on the shelf, and it will no longer be trying to hang on there and it won't be putting its feathers through because it slides down onto the shelf. It soon stops. So Harris's hawk's in there, two of them, it's a double thing. And if you saw earlier, half the roof, in an early video, half the roof was uncovered. I impromptuly covered it to stop the rain getting in, in the cold winter weather for the Harris's hawks. These are the sort of designs I like for Harris's hawks, but we'll go into more of that in a minute. I covered it because in the cold winter, an open aviary, a Harris's hawk from a desert, sits at the front because it wants to see what's going on, gets freezing cold because it gets soaked through and it freezes tonight. But then if you cover it and it stays in there all the time, apart from when it's out, it doesn't oil its feathers as much. Because of course, traditionally, we put birds of prey out to weather on a weathering lawn. So they get the rain, they get the sun, they look after their feathers more. Have a look at this, weld mesh front. We've been trying these falcons, a lugger and a lana hybrid. A weld mesh front, hard if the birds hit it, and if they hang on there, it can easily wreck their feathers. You have to modify, you have to modify and change your free loft. Build it how you think, and then modify it. Different size perching all the way along means their feet get exercised, but I'll also still be wrapping their favorite portion with proper AstroTurf, just to make sure they don't get bumblefoot. Look at this bird. I've not fed them yet today. I want to see fidgeting. I want to see them doing stuff. And we can look at pros and cons. Look at this bird. It was nervous then. It's at high weight. Moving around in there. This isn't a huge aviary. But it can still move up and down more and around and exercise more than maybe it would tethered. So one bonus of free lofting is they can choose themselves where they sit within their design of aviary. And of course, if they are moving around, they are, of course, getting some exercise, maybe more than they would, but high ring perches, high blocks, at least the bird is getting a fair bit of exercise. Chain link. Don't use chain link, I've inherited it. Not good at all. They can get their toes and even feathers in there. Put a perch, put a perch where the bird might fly to you. So it's gonna land on the perch and not hang on the wire. Over here, peregrine. Free loft, nice barred window, windowsill there, it can come out half open. It's a more temperate bird, so we use a half open aviary design there, so it can get rain on it, can weather itself, but it can shelter as well. Why don't we use all the space here? Why don't we have 50 foot free lofts? Because the bird can build up speed and break its neck as it hits the other end. Bigger isn't always better with aviary design, not at all, not at all with big powerful birds. We've got a different mesh here. It's a welded plastic mesh. AstroTurf on the perches. Put it on, even if you're using different varied perches on your free loft. 
another really good thing swing perch swing perch love birds love them it stops them hitting the mesh put the swing perch near the front and they'll land on there so why don't you all why look at my birds all sitting there chilled out they've got room to fly they've got different perching we can hose down the gravel why don't you all why don't you all free loft your birds it's not the best way all the time Owl just flew into the front wire. It's got a fine mesh to stop it hurting itself. There's a barn owl there clinging on. So let's get this straight. No owls or vultures should be kept tethered. Fact. Some vultures can work well tethered when they're out of the show. Many owls will work well tethered out of the show. An owl's job in the day is to keep still. Most owls keep still. Tethering, brilliant. It's doing nothing. At night, owls don't get it. They chew, they pull, they fall on the floor. They just don't get tethering. Don't keep your owls permanently tethered. It's just not, not on. And also, vultures don't have the strong raptor legs for catching and wrestling their prey. They've got chicken legs. They're not really well designed for being tethered. If you're not a falconer, your poor dog, you throttle it around its ruddy neck. Our birds, their ankles instead around their neck, it's got really strong feet. Look at these birds. The owl's great. Keep them like this. Keep all your owls like this take them out to fly them if you tell them on the glove and you've done it well that's okay little vulture there i'll show you the eagle in a second so pros and cons the pros are your bird can possibly be in the dry all the time if it's free lofted if it's got a solid roof but then it's not going to oil itself it can be given the choice you can put perches where it gets plenty of morning sunshine but where the more high summer sun actually it actually goes goes off the perches and it puts it in shade so they don't get hot. You can have their baths in there, but you've got to keep an eye on their baths. They're not, hopefully, they're not going to get tangled up in a free loft because the flying jess is on. Nothing to tangle, but you can still get them out with their jesses. Here, single door system. If you're building one from scratch and it's your bird, use a double door system because our birds, most of them fly all year round, and when they have a rest, it's no big issue. They live here all the time. We've never had a problem with birds escaping and getting lost, but they could fly over your shoulder and disappear. If you build it from scratch, definitely put in a, a double door porch system like a lot of ours have. Tethering gives your bird freedom of choice within its aviary. It gives it the room, more room, more room to move, although you can't have a huge free loft. Did I say tethering? A huge free loft. It gives you more time you can have a food chute that drops onto a shelf there drop the food in if you're not flying a bird not weighing the bird drop the food in you haven't even got to handle that bird better still if you do want to go on holiday someone that hasn't got much of a clue about birds of prey they can pop food through a food chute the bird's not at flying weight it doesn't really matter you can give it too much food it's not going to starve it can have plenty of food they can fill the the bath up with a hose doesn't matter if it goes green with algae around the edges that's no problem that's harmless but they can run the water clean loads of pluses for tethering big plus point for me now we open to the public not just to the public on experience days a big plus point is i don't have a thousand times oh why'd you chain that poor bird down why is it tied down oh that poor thing it can't fly all stupid things that as falconers we know are irrelevant and and stupid at the end of the day no there's no stupid question but stupid opinions by some of these minorities let me tell you the negatives of actually free lofting these birds if you do have them at a rest period and you're not handling them every day and weighing them you won't notice things where their kit go wrong quite as easily you won't notice health conditions quite as easily you won't notice small damage shut up quite as easily where are we? European Kestrel, getting on for 20 years old. Where is he? Over there, over there. That little guy, Emily was in there doing some maintenance. He's having a rest period. He's not getting handled and weighed every day. Rubbish leather, rubbish leather at the end of the day, as anklets. He'd been in his bath every day, more or less, when it's been a little bit milder. The leather had gone hard, but not hard as in cracking and hard and oiled. It had actually swollen and was tight on his leg, really tight on his leg. No harm done, Emily cut his anklets off. Another few days, certainly another month, that had, that had done his leg in for sure. You'd have noticed that if you tethered that bird because you'd have been handling it every day for no more other reason than you're putting it in a muse at night and you're putting it on the weathering lawn in the day. Even if you're not flying it that day, you're still handling it. So 
lots of positives about free lofting. Negatives are, I've got to get away from that eagle for I throttle him. The negatives are for sure with free lofting, you are not keeping such a close eye on those birds. You're just not gonna, you're not, just by the fact you're not handling them, touching them every day all the time. And the other negative is designing them and getting your birds used to them and redesigning them until your birds are so comfy they won't fly into the wire or they won't hurt themselves if they do. I really wanted that lugger to move, but it's not bothered now. It was hanging on the wire earlier and I wanted you to show some of the potential problems. It hasn't caused any, but the potential problem. But problems is you might have to design and redesign that free loft to get it absolutely right. First person I really spoke to at length about free lofting their working birds was David Rampling well over a decade ago. And I tethered a team of about 10 birds at the time. And I just thought, yeah, there's pros and cons here. But I could see what he meant. But at the time I thought, mm, I don't know. I don't think tethering all my working team, that's crazy. But do you know what? We've done it here at Icarus Falconry. Almost, almost all the birds are free lofted. Let's talk about tethering. Another species that is definitely best kept free lofted are kites. They definitely do better free lofted. A bit like the smaller vultures really. All kinds of different perches there. So when I'm training birds, I'll keep the perches low to the ground and I'll use a really good anti-tangle design and so on and so forth. But as soon as those birds are comfortable and they're used to their routine, they'll be on usually about metre high perches. They look better. They're way more relaxed being off the ground that high, sort of not eye to eye with you, but that kind of thing. Different world to keeping birds blocked on sort of eight or 10 inch high blocks and bow perches for sure. Tethering means your birds can go anywhere with you within reason you know you can take them anywhere with you for sure um and again it is really the biggest bonus about tethering is that micromanaging the ability to micromanage your birds lives for their absolute best for them not you it means you can keep more birds in a smaller area can't you um i had at one point a dozen birds of prey at home um, the owls were all in avery's the kites were in Avery's, but my falcons and my hawks and my eagles, they were tethered and different forms of tethering. I quite like the, the swing perches designed for my golden eagle. I could not have had 10 or a dozen enclosures or Avery's or free lofts for those birds in my, I had a fair sized garden, nothing special, impossible, but I could keep a whole team of birds in a relatively small area. That's not a bad thing. That's not like, oh, wow, well, that's not one. So you've only keeping them like that so you can keep them in a small area. No, it was one of the bonuses was I could keep them, more of them, in a relatively smaller area than if I had them in free lofts. Oh, look at these. My God. They're cute, aren't they? So what does tethering give you positively? It gives you the ability to keep more birds in a smaller space, which is not a bad thing. It's just one of the side effects of it, really. It gives you the ability to manage your birds wherever you go. You can't build an aviary if you go on a field meet around the country, but you can block them out on a safe weathering and put them away at night. Um, if your birds are always free lofted and never been tethered, you've lost all that option. But of course, even when you're free lofting these working birds, you are going to tether them. You're more than likely, I would, tether them through their initial training period. Uh, it, short and sweet is better with these birds than trying to have a bird free lofted and train it from scratch. You're just going to scare it so much every time you approach it. That softly, softly, let's make friends with it. You're just going to, it's going to damage itself. It's probably going to smash itself to bits. Better to use the hood uh, judiciously and properly. If you don't know how to do that, we'll come to that one other day. And tether those birds while you train them and really get them. I would get those birds well trained and well manned and very calm around you before I personally would then go on to free loft them. So even if you're going to free loft these birds, you really do want to be able to tether them as well. And that's where people like the government at the moment, DEFRA, uh, they're really looking at stopping us, us 
us as a zoo from tethering birds. And of course, if we, they do that, you're going to not be allowed to tether them. And then Fulkery is going to really struggle. And of course, that is the objective of the people that they have been liaising with. Freedom for not plants. That is their objective, isn't it? Because if you can't tether the bird, well, when you hold it by its chest, you kind of tether in it, maybe. I don't know. But even if you free loft them, you need to have that option to tether. Because, of course, you might want to clean the aviary out. Pop them in the shade, out the way, tether them. Get on with them. You don't have to put them in a cardboard box. They can have a bath, they can sunbathe, whatever. Or you get on and clean their aviary out. Birds that are free lofted, I think, need to be birds that understand tethering first because they'll be better, their health, their, their mental health and their physical health will always be better if they can be tethered and free lofted. Tethering is just so versatile for the bird, but I think you have to take away from this, tethering is a really top quality way to keep working birds of prey as it has been for thousands and thousands of years to keep that bird in top peak physical condition and mental condition tethering gives you that in strides if you're a good falconer but we have got a whole falconry center every kind of bird you can imagine free lofted working birds resting birds it took a lot of doing it's still taking tweaking but we've got there for us a center base free lofting nowadays i think makes more sense it makes more sense if you're open to a zoo from public perception um i don't know if that's a good enough reason really though it is a handy reason it makes more sense for caring for a lot of birds it makes more sense for birds that are resting they can still move around and do stuff over a decade ago i thought i'd always be tethering my falconry birds after having chatted to mr rampling and him tether and him free lofting I think I've gone round in a circle in so much as I like free lofting. If you have the ability to free loft your bird at home, as long as you absolutely keep a close eye on that bird's health, and it's harder than you think when that bird's resting, when you're not paying full attention to it, keep an eye on its health. If you can free loft at home in a way that your bird is happy and comfortable and doesn't damage itself, I'd probably say definitely definitely go down the free lofting route once the bird's fully trained gives you two options then doesn't it i think i'll have cut an awful lot of this video because i've waffled as usual i'll try and cut it down so my 10 minute video that is now probably a 40 minute video is somewhere in between thanks so much for watching really is appreciated please hit subscribe massively important it goes like this a subscription depending on what i put out please click on subscribe it'll help the channel as all it's full in here. I've got so much I want to tell you guys. I really, I've been doing this such a, such a long time now. I'll also say that I'm an amateur because I want to learn stuff all the time and I learn new stuff all the time. But I also do know an awful lot about keeping these birds well, flying them well and training them well. And I want to get that over to you guys for free. I don't want to die not having help to the people in Falconry. So keep tuned to the channel and I'll always try and share all the good and the bad that I've found out with you guys. And I just want you to enjoy your falconry more and do a better job of it any which way you can. Comment below, what do you think? Tethering, free lofting, mixture of both, what do you guys do? I'd be interested to hear, especially if you've had problems. Maybe you've had problems and you think, no way, I'm never doing that again. That American bald eagle was free lofted for a year. When I got him out, I hadn't noticed because he's got black wings and a black background. He squared off all of his primaries and I said, I'll never, ever free loft him again. It'll always be tethered. He's, he's so chilled out, tethered. Free lofted him this winter. Seems to have done a lot better. I think he's tipped a couple of feathers. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs>